All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Uh, my name is Kenneth Bacor, your host. As you can see, I've got another, yet another car review. Uh, I'm on a whirlwind tour here this month in June with Eco Month here at Ajax Canada. And uh, this is my last of the press fleet for this month. So hopefully I'll get some more next month in July. But I'm proud to be standing in front of a brand new 2021 Volvo XC40 Recharge, the P8 all-wheel drive. And I want to thank Volvo Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle. And thank you for tuning in. So let me get into the details of my review. So as fashionable as it is practical, the 2021 Volvo XC40 Recharge is another desirable all-electric offering in this very popular growing market segment. Now, it is based on the gasoline version powered um, XC40 SUV, the compact SUV, but it is Volvo's answer to an all-electric vehicle. It's their first all-electric. Now remember, Polestar is a separate division of Volvo. They're owned by the same company. So this is truly Volvo's first electric SUV, or electric all-electric offering, and they've done a pretty good job. Now the XC40 is really trying to compete with the likes of the Tesla Model Ys, the Mach E's, uh, and all that kind of stuff that are electrified. Uh, but Volvo does have a very substantial uh, following and a very niche offering in the luxury vehicle market. Now the XC40 of course incorporates uh, the Swedish minimalistic design language. It's very functional yet elegant. It's a very stout yet compact SUV design. Uh, I really like it. I, I really like the size and the handling capabilities of this. You do sit nice, nice and high. The lines are sculptured. I like some of the markings to show that this isn't all electric, yet it blends into everything else that's out there uh, from a vehicular transport in the small SUV space. Now, as always, all electric vehicles uh, have the battery pack in the floor between the axles, that skateboard design and the Volvo XC40 Recharge is no exception. Uh, it does create a very planted and capable vehicle uh, that uh, takes away from the top heaviness that most SUVs and compact SUVs suffer from. This is well planted, especially with big sticky tires um, and a really nice power rating. Uh, it does handle the road quite well for the vehicle of this class. Now with regards to that power, it does have two electric motors, so it only comes in an all-wheel drive configuration. And the, between the two motors, they produce 402 horsepower and 486 pound-feet of torque. And trust me, folks, uh, that's a lot of torque for this vehicle, even though it's on the heavier side. Um, it gets up and go quite quickly. In fact, it startled me the first time that I actually slammed on the accelerator to see what it would do. It's very quick for a vehicle, again, of this class. Of course, being all electric, we're very concerned about the battery pack. This has a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack system that does give it an EPA rated range of 335 kilometers or 208 miles. Now that may not seem a lot for a battery pack of its size and you know, in looking at what else is out there in the marketplace, you would be correct in making that assumption. Uh, however, I'll, I'll tell you some of my reasons why I think that it really doesn't matter in this vehicle a little bit later on. Uh, but it does support DC fast charging up to 150 kilowatts, so which is pretty good because that means that you'll get a fairly quick, you know, 20 to 80 percent charge in that half an hour or ish standpoint. With regards to the interior, this is all Volvo. It's very functional. It's very simplistic in its design. Uh, yet it's got some futuristic looks, being that it's an all-electric vehicle, and it does offer everything, you know people love about this brand, including lots of little cubby storage holes and, and uh, outlets there. A very comfortable driving position, and, and I'll take you on a bit of a drive along, uh, give you my driving impressions coming up, uh, and really good spacious first and second row seating. So it's very comfortable, again, for a vehicle in this size. It looks a little bigger than it is, folks. I got it, I was able to park it in my garage quite easily. In fact, I had lots of room. It, it's less length than the Model 3. Uh, which I wasn't 100%, uh, I didn't really realize until I parked it in my garage how much room I had. So it was very easy to park, and, uh, and yet the interior space is abundant and very comfortable. Um, you know, they haven't really, Volvo hasn't taken away any cargo space in this because they've gone to all electric. In fact, we know that all electrics will increase cargo and interior volumes because of those designs. And because this doesn't have an engine up front like its uh, you know, base sibling, the, the XC40 Ice-V, 
you get a small frunk. Yes, you do get a frunk in this Volvo. Uh, it's not huge, but it is enough to store some small items uh, like your recharging cables if you want. So let me show you a little bit more about the interior, especially I'll focus on the binnacle and the screens just to give you a quick idea of what they offer. Let me just quickly show you the binnacle and the mains 12, 12 inch screen here. Binnacle is pretty plain, so uh, once you get in, there's no push or uh, start button or anything like that. You have the, the key fob with you, and you basically just touch the brake, and once you put it into gear, then all the information comes up. Now, of course, it's telling me I have my door open, so I guess I should close it. Let me do that. And then we'll get rid of that chime. So, um, it's a pretty basic um, binnacle system. And again, as I mentioned, Volvo is scarce in the information that it gives you. It gives you your speeds on the left, uh, signs, gives you your, your gear indicator on the right, and then some warning lights and things like that. Um, also, you can change the display from a map to a simplified, just, you know, nothing view in the middle and then what they call calm and then a driving mode so that when you have the ACC activated, it will show you the car links in front of you and that kind of stuff. So I typically keep it in kind of nav mode or in uh, plain. Uh, those are kind of the nice ones. So the key points on the binnacle here is the below. So as you can see, there is some efficiencies with the trip that I have in the lower left going and then the battery indicator. And there's no way to change that battery indicator into a range. It's strictly a battery percentage. And as I mentioned, um, I believe that Volvo is doing this just so that they, you, know, you get in and you drive the vehicle and you don't worry about it. You treat it like your cell phone, like you would. Um, you're not looking at your cell phone trying to understand how many minutes of power you have left or hours of power you have left on your phone, how much use you have. Well, it's kind of a similar mindset, I, I think, that Volvo is trying here. It's just keep it simple so people just plug it in, get in and drive, and they can understand a battery percentage. So that's why you see that. Now, if I move on to the main menu screen, there's not a whole lot going on here. It's a very simplified menu system. Again, this is based on Google Android operating system. They don't give you much to do. They give you a map function, which is pretty good. It's pretty snappy. And one thing I like about the Google Maps integration is that if you are going to go to a destination, it will tell you, of obviously, your route, but it will tell you how much battery you'll have left, battery percentage you'll have. And that's good for road trips. And if you're planning somewhere where it goes beyond your current battery capacity, it will prompt you to ask if you want to put in a waypoint like a charging station and it will route you to a charging station that it finds along your, your path. So it's pretty good. It's a really good snappy system here on the Google Maps integration. Your standard Bluetooth stuff and entertainment uh, stuff. Integration with the phone was pretty simple. This does work with both Apple CarPlay and Google Android of course. So both of those systems will work here. Car status, and there's not a lot of information here that it gives you um, other than uh, your tire pressures, and then if there's any recommended service inter intervention, or um, uh, recommended service intervals, and then if you need to tow it, it will uh, let you put it in tow mode here. Um, the other settings basically, uh, again, this is it. This is it for the screen. There's nothing more. You can get that view or you press this home type button and you get a simplified view of some of the more common applications. Yes, I like Prince, folks. I'm still living in the 80s for music. Um, the main one here is some of the settings, and there's lots of settings to deal with, but they're all fairly uh, straightforward. There's a lane keeping and road size, and I've got one pedal driving on. So as I, uh, if I talked about that in my driving um, drive along. It works quite well. It's kind of, it's not as hard as the Mach-E was. It's, there's no setting. It's just on or off. Again, like the Mach-E, if you turn the one pedal off, you coast. There is pretty well, there's zero regen. You only get regeneration if you hit the brakes. Um, and then you can either make the steering wheel firm or softer, depending on your, your, um, your driving preferences. But this is it. There's not a whole lot going on here as far as uh, even the safety because everything else is standard that it comes with. The key one here for us EV folks is the charging. And yes, you can set a charging limit. 90% um, is recommended as a maximum that Volvo uh, gives you, which is kind of industry standard nowadays. It will let you go to 100, of course, if you want to, if you need to. So you can do that. But that's uh, that's basically the industry standard. And then you can change your uh, amp limits depending on how you have it wired, how you have it set up. But that's it. That's all the, the, the information that this vehicle gives you regarding your battery system. There isn't any further detail that you can do. Of course, you can play around with your stereo system. It's got a nice Harman uh, uh, carbon, carbon, a stereo system. 
um, your connectivity, of course. There is, I believe, vehicle Wi-Fi, but it's not activated in this press vehicle. And then various controls for uh, looking at the lights. Um, if you want to, if you want to fold the back headrests, um, you can do that here from up front. They just flip down automatically. They're powered. Um, you can put the wipers in service position, like you can with the Tesla Model Three or, or the Tesla vehicles. Um, there's a, you can tilt the mirrors at reverse. Uh, that's preference automatic uh, dimming side mirrors, which is cool. Uh, and then your locking feedback and the different ways to lock into the lights. But that's not, there's not really much going on here from a menu system. Uh, and then some applications, you can set profiles and change your units and, and things like that. Uh, and that's it. The one last feature I will show you, these are your HVAC controls down here. And then you also have some controls in this section if you want to immediately defrost, put your hazards on. Uh, these are your music tracks, pause, forward and backwards, your rear defrost, all that kind of stuff. Um, <coughs> excuse me, but... The AC is basically here. Again, some settings here. And then parking, if you want to um, set up some preheating, if you want to schedule preheating or pre-cooling, you can do that um, at, at this menu screen here. Then the other one that is handy is the rear cameras. Now, this does have a 360 view camera system. Um, you can change the views if you want to just look at one view, uh, which is handy. You can do that. If you want to just look at the rear, um, then it gives you that closer up view. Now I have the hatch open, I believe. Yes, so that's why you see this funky view, but normally you would see the curb, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's handy. Uh, to, again, if you want to park, see the curbs, parallel parking, you want to see your front camera. These will turn off when you drive, so you don't get them as always. But uh, that's really an overview of the menu system. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So the XC40s all come with a power hatch, uh, power lift gate here. Uh, it's got pretty good cargo space. Uh, behind the second row, you get about 25 cubic feet of space, and you put that second row down, and it gives you 49 cubic feet. So it's a good amount of space for taking some trips or packing some camping stuff, all that kind of stuff. This particular model also comes with this um, bar or this cage mechanism that folds down, I guess, if you want to carry a pet in the back and don't want to put it in a cage. I'm sure there's an optional tonneau cover as well that's available for it. Now, Volvo, as we know, is a brand that is synonymous with safety, and the XC40, of course, continues with that heritage, especially in an all-electric version. We know that all-electric vehicles tend to be more, uh, instant, more uh, heavily structured from a structural integrity standpoint and reinforced with the battery pack and some other components. Um, and in this case, the engineers had to completely redesign and reinforce the frontal structure of the XC40 to deal with the absence of an engine. So to continue to meet their high safety requirements. Now the XC40 Recharge uh, does contain Volvo's new safety and driver assistant features. Uh, these are high-tech assistant features that, be, that are standard in the XC40. And they include elements like automated emergency braking and adaptive cruise control. The emergency braking also includes pedestrian and cyclist detection. You also get standard lane departure warning with lane keeping assist. And I'll tell you a little bit about the lane keeping assist coming up in the, the drive along. And as I mentioned, the adaptive cruise control, what they, what they call a semi-autonomous driving mode. Now this has nowhere near any level four or level five autonomy. These are safety driver's aids and assistant features. So make sure you remember that. All right, so let's go for, uh, for a drive along and I'll give you my quick driving impressions. All right, so here I am in the XC40. Sorry for a little bit of the sun glare there. Um, just driving on my favorite country road here in Caledon. Quick driving impressions. Um, this is a really smooth, comfortable vehicle. So, you know, Volvo is known for comfort, for quality, and for just overall aesthetics and a very nice feel when you get into their vehicles. And the XC40 Recharge is no exception. Handles the road quite well, absorbs the bumps uh, well. Again, for a vehicle of its class, you know, it is a compact SUV. Um, so it's been a pretty pleasant vehicle to drive. I'm in the one pedal mode. As I mentioned, it's either on or off. So with one pedal driving, you get uh, maximum regen. There are no other levels of regen. It's just simply one pedal driving as you modulate the accelerator. Uh, if you turn it off, then you get zero regen unless you hit the brakes and you get a little bit of regen. Uh, otherwise, you just coast. So very similar, as I mentioned, uh, to the Mustang Mach-E. Um, so that's one thing to take notice of. There are no other buttons or levers or stocks or anything to paddles to modulate the regeneration. So it's pretty good. 
Um, overall, again, you know, the efficiencies are okay. I've been driving this around. It's been you know, fine for my daily driving needs. I could see myself going back to work, you know, four or five times without having to recharge. So definitely get, you know, four, four days of use out of, a, uh, out of a charge in normal, good weather conditions. Um, but the, the handling, the refinement, this is a very quiet, quiet vehicle I've noticed. Um, I really don't hear much motor whine. I hear a little bit of tire noise because these are big tires. Uh, but other than that, this is a very well insulated cabin um, and it allows you to play the music on low and hear it quite adequately. Um, uh, here's uh, my example of uh, I'll have coming up here, the uh, lane keeping and the uh, adaptive cruise control. Uh, one thing I will tell you about the adaptive cruise is that it will take you to a full stop and it will hold you there. And then if you tap the accelerator, it'll go again and up to the speed that you last set it. So it does have that feature. Other than that, um, you know, I've had some passengers in here. It's nice and roomy. It's a very clean, very ergonomically friendly and very uh, high quality cabin. The materials are nice and comfortable. The seats are really nice. Um, so overall, it's a very pleasant vehicle to drive. Um, you know, I could see this as just get in and go. Um, you feel safe in this vehicle. You feel well planted. As you can see, I'm going through some curvy roads here in my favorite drive and it handles it quite well. Uh, so um, again, very pleasant driving experience. Now let me show you the lane keeping abilities. All right, as usual, I'm trying the lane keeping out here uh, in the uh, Volvo XC40 Recharge. Um, it's pretty good. Um, you can hear that apply steering wheel uh, mechanism that you need to grab it. Um, I'm running it at 110 here on the highway in pretty good conditions. Nice, uh, as you can see, lane markings and uh, everything looks pretty good. It's pretty stable. About every 10 seconds or so, it does ask you to grab the steering wheel, as you can see, and then um, until those colors come back on, illuminate, um, then it starts taking control again. So I've got adaptive cruise set with the lane keeping, which is that symbol with the steering wheel with the hand holding on it. So when it turns red, that means it starts beeping at you that you have to grab it. It's about once every, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds or so, uh, so it is looking, it's got a torque sensor looking for it, but as far as keeping on the lanes, it's really good. Um, it's pretty stable, not no ping-ponging, and I passed a car already with it on, and um, there was no hiccups, no uh, anything weird. I was actually in the right-hand lane as well, where you see, you know, your exit's coming up there, and it didn't try to choose to go right, it, it remained going straight through. So it, it does have some good intelligence in it, so uh, hey, pretty good for Volvo. It's my first time in a Volvo trying out their lane keeping assist and adaptive cruise. And uh, hey, big thumbs up. Works really well. Pricing on the XC40 Recharge here in Canada, base model starts at $64,950. My tester came in at just over $71,000 with some options. And, and then freight and PDI and taxes are extra. Here's my mileage chart for the uh, XC40. As you can see, I didn't do a ton of driving. I only had it for a couple of days and uh, was busy with work, so didn't get an opportunity to go very far. But uh, I think the overall takeaway from this is that it did fairly well uh, for what it offers. Uh, it had an overall efficiency of 186 uh, kilowatt hours per kilometer. Uh, which is pretty good for a heavy uh, SUV-ish vehicle. Um, on the highway, it was around the 20, uh, 215, 220 mark, 210. 
uh, mark, so uh, a little higher, of course, on the highway. But uh, I think that's the main takeaway is that if I extrapolate what the range would have been, because again, I couldn't find where it shows the range, um, I would predict that it would probably come out around 375 on a good day as a best case. So higher than EPA uh, ratings. So in closing, the Volvo XC40 Recharge is a very competent and capable all-electric vehicle. It's got a nice design, it's got very pleasant, smooth and manageable driving characteristics at comfort levels, and it's a well-built quality vehicle. No squeaks or rattles, anything like that, but that's traditional Volvo quality, right? You slam that door, you hear a nice sounding thud and you feel confident in what uh, you're sitting in and what you're driving in. So Volvo does build very high quality cars. From an EV standpoint, I think this car, this vehicle drove great throughout the week. But what I think Volvo has done is just, instead of reinventing, reinventing a new platform at this point, I know they're moving that way, but take the compact SUV space where they have a very strong product in that offering with the XC40 Ice V product and electrify that. Now these are built in Belgium. So the quality, as I mentioned, and the workmanship is very good there. And then they're shipped overseas here. Take that vehicle, electrify it, and give it to the, their owner base and trying to get new customers that are thinking of electrification. And of course, we know the compact SUV space is where it's at. I think they've done a very good job in this vehicle. Yes, the efficiency could be better, um, when, especially when you compare it to the likes of the Model Y and the Mach-E's, which have much higher ranges. And those are comparatively priced vehicles here in Canada. Uh, so it really depends on what you're looking for. I think what Volvo has done here is to try to simplify the, uh, the EV choice and for owners to just kind of get in, plug it in overnight, get in in the morning and drive and not worry about, about the range and about a lot of the details that we sometimes tend to get hung up on in driving an EV. Just drive it as a normal car experience, a vehicle experience, come home, plug it in at night and off you go. And that's why I believe you don't see a range on the instrument cluster. Uh, because they don't want you really focusing on how much range and watching it count down like we do tend to uh, as EV folks. Sometimes we get caught up on that. They want you just to look at it, look at your battery, just like your phone. When you get down to 20% or 30%, you know you got to start thinking about charging that kind of mentality. And for most people that are going to buy this that have home charging capabilities, it's going to work excellent because 300 plus kilometers is more than enough for a daily range. And, you know, it's a very comfortable and, again, it's a very quick vehicle for what this. Uh, this is a little bit of a silent kind of runner here. I was very impressed with the acceleration and the, the capabilities of this vehicle. So uh, is it a thumbs up? Absolutely, it's a thumbs up. I think Volvo has a winner. Yes, it's a bit expensive, but, you know, I, I guess I'm still thinking car pricing in the old days. You know, to me, 30, 40,000 was a lot of money. So I guess I'm probably out the lunch when it comes to pricing because all, you know, the average, I think, car price now in Canada, the purchase price is around 45,000 or so, something along those lines. So I think I'm still back in the stone ages, but regardless, you know, it is going to cost you a bit and you're not going to get that all electric range that you would in something at the same price point and potentially the functionality. So I hope I've given you a little bit of insight into the XC40. If you're thinking of a compact SUV, you want something a little bit higher stance, solid build quality, and a very quiet vehicle, and just get in and drive, no nonsense vehicle, this would be a great candidate for you to look at. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Volvo XC40 Recharge P8 all-wheel drive. They added those stickers on it, so I have to say it. Um, again, thank you Volvo Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle. I appreciate it. Thank you on YouTube for watching. And if you subscribe, I appreciate that. If you haven't, please do. Always humbled by my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Thank you very much for helping me out. If you're interested, check the link out below and you can find out more details on that. Um, you know, lots of stuff coming up in the EV landscape. It continues to get busy and you know, it's just going to get better and better and better folks. Send me your comments. If you own one of these, I'd love to hear from you. And then, you know, stay tuned, watch for my next shows. I'll probably go back to the new uh, style show for the next one. So I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. And until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Take care and stay safe.